What's going on guys, Vic VP back with another Game Case Arcades video. On this one today, by popular demand, I'm gonna teach you and show you how to wire up a coin door to a Pandora's box or any arcade. So many requests for this, I'll help you. So I can't believe the feedback and the highest demand. People always messaging me, emailing me, going, Vic, how do you wire up a real coin door? You didn't show us that on the whole convert any arcade cabinet to a Pandora's box control panel thing, which honestly, that is what exactly I did here. I bought a control panel off of eBay, converted it just like my video, but luckily this customer does have an actual coin door and I can make a video on how to wire it up to the Pandora's box. Uh, busy, busy weeks. Uh, as you can see, stay tuned. I put a lot on my Instagram story and even on the YouTube shorts. Uh, you got two by Vic four player cabinets. That is what it officially looks like right there. That is a 55 inch screen. This is a Pandora's box with a coin door. So if this video isn't too clear, I will also do it with that one. If you guys need me to, I'm pretty sure you'll figure out and understand how to wire up a coin door on it. But just to go over real quick, that one is going to be a hyperspin build, 40 terabyte trackball and all that. No coin door on that. But again, I have two Pandora's boxes going out. Essentially with this coin door video I'm making for you guys right now, you could wire up any, any arcade to a coin door, whether it's a Pandora's box or whether you're using a Raspberry Pi or if you're using a PC launch box based system, you could wire up a coin door to any system. But the most common one, honestly, is a Pandora's box because these are, I call them Pandora's boxes, are able to be used in commercial areas such as pizza shops and all that. So as you can see right now, Pandora's box is set to coin. I don't have any wiring yet. We're going to go in depth and all that. But basically, once you put a coin in, you are now able to navigate and activate a game and all that. So again, Pandora's box is what's really mostly used for coin doors. But yes, you could put this with a Pi or a PC build. Enough rambling, let's get started. All right guys, so let's start off with the basics real quick because this right now, it's been like seven months now. Coin doors are very difficult to get. Usually me personally, I do like to get my coin doors from X Arcade, but honestly X Arcade, you're killing me. Uh, it's, I'm pretty sure you're killing a lot of other people. It's, it's just, I don't know what the situation is for them personally, but uh, I, they don't have coin doors. I did a pre-order on XRK for this comic book cabinet. I did that in April and on their site it says that it will ship in May. Right now it's like May 15th and no sign of shipment. Uh, XRK was my main go-to for coin doors because they do have single and dual slot. Uh, but in all honesty, this coin door and the one for the comic book came from Game Room Solutions. I couldn't beat the price, they had it in stock, I got it in my hands within three days. Yes, XRK, the quality is better. Not to mention that they do have LED lights where the, um, you know, the coin reject is, whereas Game Room Solution does not have LED lights. But in all honesty, you put a quarter in, it hits the micro switch. Coin doors are coin doors. I do like XRK, but uh, you know, the unreliability of when these things are shipping out, I, I'm, as you can see, building these and selling these. I can't rely on them too much. So yes, these are running Game Room Solution coin doors. Again, same thing, whatever coin door you have will work, it's the same process. The only big thing I do notice is that with Game Room Solutions, they did not include wiring. There's absolutely no wiring for the micro switch to your control panel or whatever. So you will have to get a little handsy and a little bit artsy and you know, basically make a, a, a female connector to make it work with your arcade. Honestly, if you have been wiring up your arcades, you should have a couple of spade connectors handy I'll also show you what I personally do, but that's the only one thing right now that I see from Gaming Solutions. There is no wiring. XRK does include wiring. It's a pretty long wire. It's a green and white wire. They include the wiring on it, but you know, let's be real, wiring is wiring. It's not like a deal breaker. So without further ado, let's take a closer look and let's start wiring this bad boy up. All right, so now real quick, before you even start, you gotta kind of think about your application, right? I'm right now running a Pandora's box on this. The big thing I'm trying to get at is this. The coin door does have two slots. Really, how you want to wire this up, player one, which is usually the left slot, 
goes to player one coin and then the second slot usually goes to player two slot. As far as Pandora box builds, that does not matter. I am gonna basically just wire this up to player one coin. Player two coin, there's no, there's no difference, it just inserts a coin. Again, for a Pandora's box, you just have to really wire up player one coin. What does that mean? I'm basically gonna put a jumper from this micro switch to this and then up to the JAMA harness or whatever the family harness on a Pandora's box. If you're going to do a Raspberry Pi or a PC build, I suggest you wire it correctly, meaning player one coin, player two coin. Only because depending on what you're playing on, for example, if you play four player Simpsons, player one will be Marge and player two will be Homer or whatever that is. I'm drawing a blank right now, but that's how you want to wire it. If, again, you're doing a regular, even with a two player cabinet, you're better off doing it that way. For a Pandora's box, just wire it to player one. Player one coin is, it's a universal coin. It goes to both player one and player two. So I personally suggest, and what I'm gonna do on this build is I'm gonna daisy chain this and then up to one input, which is player one coin. So now also what I'm gonna do in this video, and I have to do it because this is gonna be shipped out. What I have to do basically from here to the actual family harness, I'm gonna have to make an actual separate connection this way, in case the customer decides to remove the control panel, he will have a disconnect to the coin door. Only because, you know, if he ever needs to work on it or pull out the control panel, if you don't have a disconnect, you're going to rip out everything here. So there will be a disconnect close to the control panel. I always do that. You know, you never know. You might have to work on it. I will show you how my control panel right now is set up real quick. It's very easy. Basically, I have enough slack to pull the control panel out a little bit and disconnect the family harness and I'm totally free. So I'll show you that real quick. Again, right now for this cabinet I'm doing, I just spray painted the bezel for this. So this is 99% done. I'm gonna do the coin door now. So I could remove the control panel. As you can see, I have this trail of wire that follows me here, but I do have the Pandora's box right on this wall here. So I could simply just take the family connector and disconnect. As you can see, I am out. So again, for me to pull this control panel out, I have to now also add a connector here, a disconnect, so that I'm not ripping out the wire from the coiner. So you do want to keep that in mind. It also kind of relies on and, and relates to where your connections are. You're going to definitely want to, you know, put a connector there. Um, usually on the Game Room Solutions cabinets, because the control panel doesn't actually remove and it just kind of swivels up, you don't have to do this kind of connection if your connection is like that, if your control panel is like that. For me, as you can see, you have to take the entire control panel out. Also, I do have now LED disconnect. So right on the right side, I could basically connect and disconnect easily. No need to worry about ripping out wiring and all that. So connectors do help. Okay, so now that I understand my personal situation on how I'm gonna have this set up, I'm basically gonna daisy chain uh, I'm going to rather work on player, I'm going to have this one go, no, I'm going to have this one actually. This one's going to go up to the control panel up top. So I'm going to take a jumper here. I'm going to make a wire here. We're going to go up and over to this micro switch and then up. Usually I go up, you know, you want to go along the door, make sure there's enough doorway to swivel and all that. Uh, depending on who you get the coin door from, You'll notice that the micro switches sometimes, most of the time, are different spade heads than your standard arcade micro switch. Game Room Solutions just gives you the spade head and a piece of metal, that is it. Not even ways to like close it in. You're gonna need a crimper for that. Me, personally, I do get these spade connectors off of Amazon. I'll put a link down below. Basically, they go right onto this head and I use them for all my micro switches and you'll be set. So you're gonna need a couple of these. You're really going to need two, four, and if you want to do two up top, you're going to need about six of these. Basically, what I'm going to do right now, I'm going to work on the coin door. We're going to basically work on the daisy chain here, and I'm going to give enough slack for enough room to pull out the control panel. So now, usually, you want to be color coordinated. Me, personally, I have a bunch of red, blue, and yellow wire. Color of the wire doesn't matter. You just want to make sure that you remember what color is ground and what color is the actual input. 
Uh, again, most of you guys do get this Amazon kind of stuff here. These heads will not fit. Depending on what coin door you get, this head does not fit. It is too small. So we're going to do the ground first. The ground is the easiest thing to do. So we're going to grab a bare wire. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to start first with the ground, okay? Again, usually black is ground. I have blue, so B to B. I'm going to use the blue wire here. So again, we're going to start basics. We're going to splice. We're going to take a wire here. I should say a spade connector thing, female and splice boom so again the end one here doesn't need a daisy chain in it again ground is the one that has this elbow that is ground so i'm going to put this here and now basically i'm going to prepare myself we're going to put this in the clip like so and i'm going to go up and over we can even go to the next clip like that and down right here so now that i have a good measurement i'm going to give myself a little bit of slack i'm going to cut this wire here and we're gonna splice, and I'm gonna splice another wire here because this has to go up to the control panel. So I'm gonna take that, we're gonna, nice. I use stranded wire, I am gonna move into using um, solid wire. Let me grab another spade, hang on, another connector. Might as well have these handy. So we take another one. I have a special tool to crimp these. You could use plier heads but I have the tool. And as you can see, now I have a daisy chain going, ready to go. I'm gonna connect these here. Again, once you squeeze the head, that wire ain't going nowhere. We're gonna connect this now to the elbow on the left slot there, boom. Now I have my daisy chain ground ready to go. Same thing, we're gonna use this nice clip here. We're gonna wind up going around here. This kind of will float, but you wanna give yourself enough slack and then we're gonna go up here. You know, I wanna give it a lot of slack because you know you wanna actually pull it out. So I'm gonna cut my wire here. Again, I bought it through the top. I'm gonna cut it here. Boom, done. I have now my template for the ground is set. So again, blue is gonna be my ground. Let's now wire up the input. Same thing, same theory. We're gonna take one end of a wire. We're gonna splice. Give it a little twist. Again, this is the start. So I don't need a daisy chain here. I don't need a secondary wire to this. We're gonna make sure our connection is good. As you can see, in. And on the coin door, there's usually two kind of ports here. One is normally open, N-O. You can see it on the side of the micro switch. And there's another one that's N-C, which is normally closed. You want normally open. And on this one here, it is farther away from the ground. Usually it's not. Usually it's the one that's closer to the ground. But in this case, it is the one farther from the ground. So right now, boom, I'm in. Again, this is the input. This is what's gonna send the signal, hey, I'm inserting a coin. Same thing, we're gonna keep things nice and neat. And we're gonna get ready for the daisy chain. So same thing, give yourself a little bit of slack. Now again, this one now, we do need to make a daisy chain to it. You don't need fancy tools. You might be looking at this video and be like, oh wow, this guy has a nice splicer. You could do it with a scissor. You could do a wire splicing tools. It's not that difficult. I believe the only headache you're gonna run into is the spade connector. That's probably the only headache you're gonna deal with. We're gonna take this. We're gonna crimp it. Same thing, it's gonna go into normally open here. And again, it's always good to give yourself some slack. So as you can see, I have some slack here in case you ever have to pull out wires and all that. You don't wanna be super tight. Now, with the blue, I'm gonna match right here. I'm gonna bring this yellow up, because again, this has to go up to the control panel. I already have the blue kind of pre-wired. So keeping it tight, we're gonna make sure that we give it the same length and we're just gonna cut right there. Boom, I have my ground and I have my coin. We are now ready to wire it to the control panel. So now again, just in case, I think the video was too zoomed in. Again, I took my ground originally, I wrapped it around. As you can see, the door open, 
This is the most slack you need because when you close the door, the wire folds in, so you're A-OK. -okay. So I basically did it as a template. I held my hands here and I pulled it up. So as you can see, I have enough wire for me to physically pull out the control panel and do a disconnect. So I am, I'm pretty good. I'm not too worried about it. And it's always good to have slack. Just like real arcades, it's always good to have slack. Now, we're gonna get ready to wire up the actual control panel. All right, so we're gonna go now to the control panel. As you can see real quick, I do have the control panel here all set. And again, we're focusing on player one coin. Now, I'm not dealing with player two coin for the coin there because it's not needed. I'm focusing on player one coin. So if I flip this now, right, our coin is this input here. Again, if you look at my original video on how to take a control panel, you're gonna be looking at the coin button. I'm gonna grab the Pandora's box control panel. So again, this was the original control panel that I took apart, just like my video. Player one coin, if I flip, it is this input, and on this specific Pandora box, it was the red wire. So again, if you look at my original video, you're looking at the coin from your panel, coin. That's what we're gonna wire the coin door to here, okay? I already did my wiring. The coin button is this one here, red. See that, look at that, red. Red wire, red wire, coin, and coin. So now in this case, personally, I'm gonna be using these kind of disconnects, the male and female. They plug right on in, this way it's kind of easier to disconnect. You could also do like male to female spades. This is like the ground connection here. They're just kind of difficult to pull out. These are a little bit easier. Again, I'm getting extra fancy because I'm a seller. The other way you could do it is that you could just do wire nuts. Simple blue wire nuts, wire caps, and that'll make your life easy too if you don't have all this stuff handy. All right, so for visual purposes, I removed the button from the housing. This way you can kind of see it much clearer now. Again, this is the coin button. As you can see, it is red, and this goes to my Pandora JAMA harness right here, okay? So me personally, I'm gonna be doing it differently, but for you guys at home, it's gonna be most likely this way. Normally, you do have kind of like this plastic head that goes over the switch. Be sure to keep your colors the same so you don't confuse yourself. Again, my yellow is my input. I'm gonna push it through. We're gonna splice, and it's good to splice a lot of wire if you're gonna do it this route. And you're basically gonna kind of butt it up against here and spin. Be sure that it's not touching the ground or anything like that. You wanna give it enough slack so you have a good spin. And as you can see now, I now have a daisy chain for the encoder here. You could just take your plastic sheathing over it and it'll go over as so. Sometimes, yep, there you go. Sometimes the plastic sheathing is tight, but as you can see, good to go. My ground doesn't have the plastic sheathing as you can see here. Again, me personally, I'm gonna be doing a different route, but you guys at home could do the same route. Same thing, again, my blue is my ground. Be sure to keep it color coordinated. You're gonna wanna swipe under it you just wanna make sure that these, again, I'm using stranded wire. You're gonna to wanna to make sure that that right there is not touching anything. And you could always put electrical tape to keep it tight. Again, this is for you guys at home. It's not gonna be moving much and all that. As you can see, I'm pretty good. Again, ground is set and our regular input is set. So now just so I don't confuse people, again, if you are the type that doesn't need control panel removing, this right here is going to our coin door. What I just did is basically you kind of strip these and then put it to the micro switch and you're done. Your button should work now as it is connected to it. Me personally, I'm doing an extra step of adding a connector here and the control panel is gonna get a separate connector. So it all depends on your, per, your personal situation. If you don't need the control panel removed, then what I just showed you should be coming, the wire should be coming from your coin door. Again, for me personally, I have a totally separate wire. I'm not buying my arcade cabinet. I have a totally separate wire. I'm gonna be adding a connector here for a disconnect, quick disconnect. So again, if you do not need the control panel disconnected, like this situation, you are essentially done. So now again, once you cut the connector out, give yourself enough slack. You definitely wanna make sure it surrounds it. As you can see, like for this here with the blue, Again, keep your colors coordinated. Blue is ground for me. 
I'm gonna now take these three wires here. We're basically making a daisy chain. My ground was originally daisy chained already, so it was going to another switch, but I am now adding a blue to it. So we're gonna get this nice. You could keep it long to be safe, doesn't really hurt. And again, we are gonna be using our spade connectors. If I could find mine, here it is. I'm using red, doesn't matter, color doesn't matter. We're gonna keep this nice and tight in here and then we crimp. So red spade is my ground. And as you can see, I am tight, I'm good to go. We're gonna keep that connection there. So ground wire is connected and all good. Again, basically, instead of doing this whole spade thing, you could do a wire nut. Next, we will take our Pandora's box connector here, which is this red. Again, I'm gonna cut it out. And I'm gonna get ready for a yellow wire also, because again, I personally was using a yellow wire. I'm gonna give it a nice splice. Give it enough, doesn't hurt to have, you know, a lot. We're gonna put these together. Make sure I'm in frame, I know I zoomed in. So again, keep your colors coordinated. We're gonna add this. Again, the length of this doesn't matter. It could even come out from the top. If anything, it's better that way. It gives a better secure connection. But um, here, we're gonna, actually I'm gonna use a blue. We're gonna use a blue spade to serve a kind of night and, nice and clean. Again, this is my OCD. <laughs> this is my OCD playing. So put the blue in. Give it a nice crimp. And boom, set. Perfect. I'm gonna put my micro switch back. Don't worry, I still have to do wire cleanup. That is the last thing I do on all my panels. So as you can see here, I now have yellow that's gonna to go to the coin door, and I have my blue, which is the ground, to the coin door. So again, I'm gonna give slack. It doesn't hurt to have slack in the cabinet, especially with how empty the cabinet is. So again, this right here, this is my input to the coin door, my ground to the coin door. I'm gonna give myself some slack. And we cut. What I'm doing again, instead of these kind of connectors, I am going to be fancy and use actual connectors. You could use wire nuts. If you don't wanna, if you don't have these connectors, you could use wire nuts. So the best thing when it comes to customers is, we're gonna make sure that each end is different. So I'm gonna take a female end and we'll put that on the ground. Same thing, I use the same crimping tool. You could use pliers, but honestly, that's not the right way to go. Boom, crimped, that's set. And now, the input, I'm gonna put a male. This way, number one, it is color coordinated, but the customer can't mix these up because I got two different connectors here. You're gonna understand once I get to the actual coin door. Two, boom. So now I have quick disconnects, male, female. Let's go now to the arcade cabinet. So now we're back to the arcade cabinet. Same thing now again, this is going to my control panel. So I do have a lot of slack technically, and like I said, better off having slack. We splice. Now looking at it there, the blue wire from my control panel is a female end. So I'm gonna put the male end here. Again, if you don't want to do this, you could use wire nuts, wire caps. Got to grab my crimping tool and we crimp here. Boom, that's in. My yellow, which is the input, has a male end on the control panel. That means I need a female end here. Always want to triple check that. <laughs> You don't wanna waste the connector when you found out that you didn't put it on the right side. So here we go. And done. So now we're gonna grab our control panel. As you can see, I technically have two separate connectors here. I have the family harness, and now I have my coin door connector here. So we're gonna rest the control panel. We're gonna do the coin door first to make our life easy. Again, I have a lot of slack, which is great, because in case somebody has to ever open this and work on it, 
you have quick disconnect. So I'm gonna take my connections here. I'm gonna try to do it in front of you guys here. As you guys can see, blue to blue, I have two separate connectors. We're gonna connect that and yellow to yellow. So like I said, be sure you have to, if you're gonna do this route of the fancy connectors, you gotta make sure you have it because essentially now, the customer, whoever's gonna work on it, they can't mix the wires because you can't do anything. That's it. <laughs> it doesn't connect. So we got these fancy connections here all set. We drop that in and now we're gonna put our family harness in. I'm in. Moment of truth now. I'm gonna bring you guys back. Hopefully you guys could hear the coin drop. Let's see. I hit the coin. There's one. I hit the other coin. There's two. That is it. Coin door is set. Let's do the official test. Let me grab an actual quarter. So now we're gonna grab our quarter. Moment of truth. Player two slot. We heard the coin. Player one slot. We heard the coin. Awesome. Be sure these are tight here. If they are loose, your quarter might not fall through correctly, but we're set. That is it. Coin door is in, and we can now play some arcade games with our coin door. So again, now this customer personally has the coin door. Both slots work, and his slots up top do work too, the buttons up top too. So he has basically four ways to put input of coin. I believe he's putting this in a pizza shop. So we will be disconnecting this. I'll make a video for him on how to connect these easily. It's just really the ground. And that's it, he's really set. I just have to kind of clean up wiring as always. This control panel is not totally nice and neat. That was the last piece of the puzzle and now I'm able to finish it up. Again, I hope the video helps. I went the extra step by adding disconnects. If your control panel needs to be removed, which 99% of you do need that, you will need to go the extra step of either making fancy connections or again, you could use wire caps. But either way, there you guys have it. The most requested video, Coindor, is now complete and working.